Okay, we're going to go ahead and start. It's about 345 uh, on a Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for, for joining us for uh, information on the 2020, 2020 Kansas Kid Win Challenge. I uh, appreciate everybody being here today. Um, we are uh, ready to, to kick this season off. Um, but before uh, we get too far into it, we certainly want to thank all of the organizations that uh, enable us to put these on. Um, we have a, a number of sponsors, as you can see. The, the three main well, by far the, the main one is the Kansas Corporation Commission Energy Office. Um, and then we have Enel and EVP Renewables as, as two of the major corporate sponsors followed by all these other ones that you see, Evergy, uh, Kansas Electric Cooperatives. Uh, all of the, the Kid Win Challenge sites have also uh, donated their facilities free of charge. So Wolf Creek Nuclear Operating Corporation, the Village Square Mall, Green Tech Academy, and, and Olathe Public Schools, uh, the North uh, Kansas Educational Service Center, and then the Topeka Center for Advanced Learning and Careers. So thanks to the generosity, uh, generosity of all these organizations, we're able to put on these, um, <laughs> these Kid Win Challenges for you. And it's not just for you because we enjoy them also. Uh, so in 2018, when we first started this, we inherited the, the program from Ruth Douglas Miller at, at Kansas State University. And uh, even before we held the, our first one in 2018, during the registration, we noticed we weren't getting any schools from Western Kansas, any schools from Southeast Kansas. Uh, so we made the decision, you know, hey, if we want to, to get more people here, we have to go out to them um, and make it easier for the schools and students to participate. So in 2019, we held uh, our first regional challenges going to uh, all four corners of the uh, state of Kansas. And you can see we increased the number of schools from eight to 20 and the number of teams from 17 to 44. And in 2019, we had uh, 192 students participate. And that is the number of which we're most proud because that's what we want. We want the students to be um, exposed to careers in the renewable energy industry. We want them exposed to science, technology, engineering, and math. We want them to have a, a fun time doing it and, and see the value in hands-on activities such as, as these Kid Win Challenges. So that was 2019. Here's how we're looking so far for 2020. And uh, as you can see, we already have 22 schools and 47 teams, which surpasses last year, but we want to do better. Uh, we want each of the regions to have, um, we, we max them out at 16 teams. So so there's a, a possibility for a total of 80 teams, and we have we have 33 more to go. So um, you can see that uh, right now we're we're kind of um, uh, kind of scarce in the the Kansas City area, and, and then in the Northwest, uh, the other ones are, are coming along pretty fine. So um, it's it's a, a pleasure to see uh, 16 teams uh, or. Um, Sorry, 11 teams in, in the Southwest. That's the Dodge City one. I think last year we only had like maybe five teams. So we've more than doubled in that location. And, and that's very pleasing to us as well. We'll see that slide a little bit later on, of course, uh, again. Um, so here's the, the Kid Win Challenge. Uh, even, even though we, we have the Kansas Kid Win Challenge, uh, it is a national organization. It's a national event. Uh, it's going to culminate in the, the National Kid Win Challenge in Denver, uh, Colorado in June of uh, next year. Um, but I, I put this up there so that you can see all the, the happenings in the state of Kansas. Uh, we have a, a total of six challenges that are uh, going to be conducted, uh, five regionals followed by a statewide competition. The two uh, lighter blue circles or teacher workshops that we had in Dodge City and, and one in Manhattan. We just had those last week and, and we had a, a pretty good turnout, a total of 44 teachers um, uh, attending that. And, and as a result of that, we, we have some additional teams that, that have signed up. But we certainly, uh, e even if they don't sign up, we have 
additional teachers that uh, are now more cognizant of the resources that they have for wind energy, renewable energy, energy efficiency. So we're, we're pleased with, with that as well. So new for the 2020 Kid Win Challenges, we have uh, added a, a fifth regional challenge. That's the Kansas City area. Um, that's uh, hosted at the Green Tech Academy at the Olathe Public Schools. Uh, I'm Olathe sorry, West. Ol Olathe West. Um, we've also added an instant challenge uh, to um, next to this year's competition. And we have in here that it, it's to more closely mirror the National Kid Win Challenge, which is true, but it also answers one of the very first survey um, results that we had from the 2018 uh, Kid Win Challenge, and, and that was uh, from somebody who said, hey, we'd like for you to add an instant challenge uh, because that's what they do at the, the National Kid Win. So, so we decided to, to put that in uh, for the Kid Win Challenges that will be taking place in, in February, March, and, and April. Um, the National Kid Win Challenge will take place in Denver, Colorado during the American Wind Energy Association. And uh, right now they're, they're given the dates as June 2nd through 4th. They say that those may get clarified uh, a little bit as we move further, um, but um, we're, we're looking forward to that. Here are the 2020 dates and locations. Uh, as you can see, the first one is gonna kick off in Olathe at the, the Green Tech Academy on February 5th. Uh, we'll follow up in Manhattan here on February 20th. Uh, that's at the, uh, the engineering extension offices here at the Unger Complex. Then we're going to do back-to-back -back ones in Dodge City and, and Oakley on February 25th and 27th. That uh, just makes it easier for us from a travel perspective, and we don't have to load up uh, the vehicles uh, a whole bunch of times, uh, traipsing out to, to western Kansas. Um, and then we'll finish up the regionals in... Southeast Kansas at uh, Wolf Creek Nuclear Power Plant in Burlington on March 6th, uh, which is a Friday. Um, that's a little bit different. They can, they can, they have, they have training at that facility Monday through Thursday, uh, so they're they're only available on on the Fridays. And then the statewide challenge, and and um, as some of you may realize, that the first, the top two teams in each in each age division, the uh, fourth through eighth and the ninth through twelfth uh, are invited uh, to the statewide challenge, and that's going to occur on Saturday, April fourth. We have that on a Saturday to encourage uh, parents to attend um, and make it easier for for parents and siblings uh, to to come over and take a look at that. So this is what the Kid Win challenges are about. We want them to. Uh, discover wind energy technology and, and in particular careers that are in STEM fields related to renewable energy. We stress at each one of the challenges that it's not just wind technicians, it's not just engineers, there are multiple career opportunities in the renewable energy industry and it includes lawyers and marketers and accountants and um, uh, publicists and salespeople, just any, there's a whole whole gamut. Uh, the Kid Win Challenges do uh, help teachers and schools meet multiple next generation science standards. Um, there's a few listed up there just to, uh, just, just to name a few. They will design, build, present, and test functional wind turbines uh, that they'll uh, put to the test in, in the wind tunnel that you see there in the picture on the, on the right. Um, and then importantly, they, they will compete with peers, uh, not in a uh, combative environment, but more of a supportive environment. It, it's really cool uh, at the, in the staging areas to see the, the students from each team go around and, and talk to each other and say, hey, well, you know, why, why did you do yours this way? And hey, what's your gear ratio there? And why did you decide on six blades, not three? Um, so it, it's very encouraging to see all that, that networking taking place. It's a lot of fun. So the way the competitions work, um, for those of you who have, have never attended or, or don't know much about them, um, this is a, a competition where the, the teams build the turbine uh, before they, they attend the, the regional challenge. So it's not, it's not a design and build during the day of the competition. You, you work on it 
uh, in, in school or, or in, in your um, student-based uh, activity groups, uh, after hours, you know, on the weekend, uh, putting those together, and then you bring the completed turbine to the competition. At each challenge, the teams will compete in four different areas. Uh, of course, the most important is the performance testing in the wind tunnel, where we will measure the energy output using various devices. Um, but they also have a presentation and judging portion where they will have to bring their turbine and pre uh, supporting documentation um, to present to a panel of judges. We usually have three there at all times, um, but we'll have upwards of uh, six uh, at some of the, the competitions and then we'll rotate the judges in and out so that uh, they can also see other aspects of the competition. Uh, we do not allow uh, coaches and parents in the, the judges panel because we want the students themselves to be able to uh, present the information to the judges on, on why they did what they did, what they learned, um, you know, some, some obstacles that they had to overcome, things like that. Uh, and, and we want them to, to speak for themselves. And I think having observed some of the, the judges panel, I, I think they enjoy presenting to the judges. I won't say all of them do. <laughs> there are some for whom presentation is, is has not uh, quite risen to their forte yet, but um, it, it'll give them some it'll give them some exposure to public speaking. Yeah. So, and and the judges are very gentle. They're not looking to uh, uh, make any kids cry. They they're just um, they they enjoy the time too. So they're they're really just trying to to see how much the the students have learned during the process. Uh, we will still have a knowledge quiz this year, and in part that's due because. Um, they have a knowledge quiz at the, the National Kid Win, and we, we do try and mirror the, the, two, the two challenges. We, we don't succeed 100% because uh, at the National Kid Win, they, they have upwards of five wind tunnels, and they have various speeds, and they have a, one tunnel that's dedicated just to yawing, and uh, we, have, we don't have the room to set up five wind tunnels. So um, we, we choose not to emulate them in, in that degree. Um, this year, as I mentioned before, we will have an instant challenge. Uh, we will not give out much more information than that uh, ahead of time, because if we give it out ahead of time, it won't be an instant challenge. So um, we will announce what that is the day of the, the challenge, and we will rely upon the, the the secrecy of the, the coaches and the kids from challenge to challenge, because we're not going to change it for the regional challenges. So uh, we'll just ask you to, to maintain radio silence and, and not share what the instant challenge is with the other uh, teams at, at the other regionals. Um, each team will receive a combined score based on their performance in, in each of these four areas. So we do have uh, limits, so uh, we do uh, limit each regional competition to 16 teams. The reason we do that is we, we have the events scheduled in 15-minute in increments, um, and adding more than six teams makes that uh, a, a long and, and trying day. So we, we try not to uh, have more than 16. Um, sometimes, if uh, under some circumstances, we will bump it to 17. Um, but um, we try and keep it at 60. So if you have additional teams, uh, for instance, uh, many of you might have already registered. Um, if, if you have more than two teams, the, the third team will be placed on a waiting list. And if the, the regional challenge is full, meaning if, if we hit that cap, you can either select a different regional challenge that, that's not quite as full and, and maybe all of your teams can get in. Um, otherwise, we'll remove the extra teams from the list and we'll encourage you to have a, a method to, to reduce the number of teams. You can host an internal competition and only bring the top two. You can, you can vote on, on who gets to go, whatever. But um, if, if, if the, the regional challenge get, gets too full, too quickly, we will ask you to, to reduce. Um, as I said before, the top two teams in each division, the fourth through eighth and the ninth through 12th, 
will be invited to attend the statewide Kidwood Challenge and the top two teams in each of those uh, divisions at the statewide challenge will then be invited to attend the national event. I do want to, to emphasize this. If you are invited to attend the national event, um, please do not let uh, financial restraints prevent you from attending. Um, if you need additional funding, if we have some left over um, from ours, we, we will help you out and we will certainly help you find a sponsorship to, to attend the, the national event. But we definitely, if, if the students make it that far, we, we definitely want them to, to get to the, the National Challenge in Denver, uh, interact with, with teams throughout the, the country. We have some from California, we have some from the, uh, the East Coast, and West Coast, you know, Northwest. So, you know, we, we want them to, to experience that. It, it'll be a good time for them. So who can participate? Well, any student in the fourth or eighth or ninth through 12th grade, there is, an, and uh, there is no restriction on team size. Um, so you could have a team of one. We, we don't encourage that because that kind of reduces the number of students that can participate uh, because you'll be taking a team away from maybe somebody else that had, had three or five. Um, but uh, we also don't recommend 10 people per team because as, as teachers, you know that uh, if you have a large group, um, that enables some people not to contribute as much as others. So we, we recommend three to five uh, per team. Teams can come, uh, it can be any kind of student team. They can come from public schools, home schools, after school clubs, uh, boys and girls club, 4-H, um, FFA, uh, any, any student team can, can have a go. Uh, teams do need to have an adult with them at the event, and, and we require one adult per, per 10 students. It does not cost, per se, to participate in our Kid Win Challenges. Um, at the Kid Win Challenges, we provide uh, everything in regard to holding the event. Um, so there's no registration cost. You only need the cost for supplies to, to build your turbine. And, um, some teams elect to only reuse supplies from, from other materials. Uh, others will buy new materials and, and use them to, to build the turbine. We don't have any restrictions on that. Uh, the only re item that is required under the Kid Win Challenge is, is a Kid Win Generator. Uh, you can get these from Vernier. They cost about $7, but uh, we actually provide them to all the schools that request them. So. We have a box of nothing but kid wind generators and we'll ship them out to you or, or otherwise arrange to get them to you. Um, to make it easier for schools and, and school organizations to attend, uh, we do uh, reimburse mileage and stipends for teacher substitutes. And we also provide lunch and snacks for the students during each of the events. So as I said, once, once you get here, uh, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, another cost that we provide, it's only um, pertinent to the Northeast Challenge here in Manhattan, is that at our facility, we do not have free parking. So we provide parking permits for all the participants um, and coaches, but we will not provide uh, parking uh, permits for visitors that, that attend those challenges. So parents and and siblings that, that aren't part of the, the coaching team. Yeah. And it's $5 a day, so yeah. it's, not, it's not extreme. Five, yeah. five, $5 for the parking permit, yeah. So a typical day for the competition, uh, we, we usually have the teams arrive between eight and nine. Uh, registration is uh, 8.30 to nine, I believe. We'll kick off at nine with a opening presentation that we try and keep briefly, although it's me, so sometimes it, it goes a little bit over. But uh, we also try and keep to the schedule, and I, I believe we probably have the first uh, performance test going in at 9.15. Yeah, 9.15, 9.30. Yeah, something. so um, we'll, we'll keep to that. The teams will rotate through each of those four areas of the competition. Uh, we do put the schedule ahead together, so you'll know what that is. You will also um, get a, an opportunity if the schedule um, 
if, if you have to leave early for the day or you know you you, you want to ask us to to rearrange uh, portions of that we will take a look at that recognize that if we change that schedule it impacts others so we'll have to to talk to them as well um, but but generally that hasn't been um, too too much of a problem but but we'll work with you on on the schedule um, there will be a presentation by a Kid Win Challenge sponsor while the scores are being tallied. Uh, that's approximately around 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, so it does take us a, a little bit of time to put the scores together from all the different areas. And so we have uh, somebody talk to the students about the, the wind industry and, and uh, career opportunities and challenges and benefits uh, during that time. The winners will be announced at approximately 3.30 p.m. So uh, most teams can be on the road by around four. Again, uh, if you get to us early and say, you know, hey, we need to arrive late and leave early, then we can uh, we can try and accommodate some of those issues. Um, and those those times will shift based on the number of teams. So if if we have a regional challenge where we only have six teams uh, register, then you know, obviously we we have a lot more time and things will will change. So the basic rules, uh, as I said, the Kidwin turbine generator is the only required part and you can go to that website and order one or, or we can provide them as needed. Um, although the national Kidwind uh, competition does have an open generator, we do not uh, have that division. So we will require um, everybody to use the, the Kidwind generator. Uh, each team does have to have its own turbine and base. You are not allowed to switch parts between teams. Um, and you know that that includes just the the feet of the tower so if if you have more than one team each turbine has to be independent um, each team must also have a coach and the the coaches are responsible for not only registering the team but making sure they're where they need to be we will have runners during each of the uh, challenges that will um, escort the the teams from from one place to another, so, so we help a, a large part of that. But we also, if, if there's a schedule change, um, and this happens most typically for the quiz, if, the, if one team finishes up pretty early, um, just to, to get a little bit more time in, in the challenge, we will ask, uh, approach the coach and ask if the, the, the next team can, can go ahead and, and do the, challenge, uh, the quiz a little bit early. We do have uh, more information on our website at the KansasEnergyProgram.org, uh, Kid Win Challenge, uh, and we have important Kid Win Challenges there that, that you can uh, read for the rules and, and logistics summary. And, and some of these rules that, that I'm giving to you now will, will be in there so you can read them more at your leisure. Um, the turbine must fit inside a 48 by 48 wind tunnel, um, so you you do want to allow some room to maneuver. We don't want you to chop holes in the side of our, our wind tunnel. Uh, but I will say for those of you who are first time wind turbine developers that, um, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't build a, a little teeny weeny uh, wind turbine to, to put into the tunnel. Um, try and fill it up. The more area you have, the, the more power you, you're generally going to get from the, the wind turbine. So. Um, you have 48 by 48 uh, uh, area, so feel free to use it. The turbine must be freestanding, uh, meaning it must have its own tower. The, the only part that we'll provide is the, the weights to hold the turbine in place and the um, energy sensor to, to measure. Well, I guess the fans in the tunnel, we provide that also. Yes. Uh, <laughs> power must be generated solely by the wind. Uh, we've had a couple of students who We'll put the turbine in there and um, if they push it, uh, the blades will rotate, but it won't rotate without that push. And um, in both our kid wind challenges and the national kid wind challenges, uh, that wind turbine will not get any, any score. Uh, you are allowed to use purchased parts other than pre-made airfoils, um, but uh, we do have points that are awarded for creativity and economical use of resources. Uh, one of the, uh, we've seen some very creative uh, wind turbines. One was made out of a, a vinyl record that had been uh, cut and uh, the um, 
the the slices had been uh, heated to to warp the 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 vinyl, and and that's what they used as blades. Um, that that was pretty cool. We we enjoyed seeing that one. The blades must uh, use safe materials. We we do encourage that you avoid metal, uh, plexiglass, or anything with sharp edges. Uh, the judges uh, and the the kid win coordinators have the ultimate um, jurisdiction into whether uh, the blades are deemed safely safe enough to to put in and operate in the top. When measuring the power output from the turbine during our challenges, we do include a 30 ohm resistor to create a load. So make sure you test it that way before you get to the competition. Uh, we do have uh, some uh, equipment available that, that, you know, we do have some resistors that, that we can either loan out or, or give. So um, don't hesitate to, to contact us if you need anything. Uh, the wind speed in our tunnels is approximately three and a half meters per second. Um, so if you just use one fan to test your device, we, we have four box fans that are uh, connected together. So, um, you know, just make sure that it'll stay together in those high winds. This is uh, the Kid Wind Challenge um, official wind tunnel. Um, you can see there's four box fans uh, and it uh, has a, an aluminum frame that's wrapped in, in plastic. So this is a four by four foot uh, opening and um, your turbines will fit in here. This is the go direct energy sensor that we use to measure the energy output over time. And this is the anemometer that we use to, to measure the wind speed. Um, we do have uh, all of this equipment is available for loan. We do have five wind tunnels. We have 10 energy sensors. Some of them are currently out, but we can uh, schedule those in and out as needed. We only have three of the anemometers. Uh, so if you need one of those, um, that, that's a little bit more scarce for us. Um, but we also only use that to, to measure the efficiency. Um, so if you're just looking to see whether your turbines work, then, then all you need is the, the wind tunnel and the, the go direct energy sensor. Um, for cancellation or rescheduling, we, uh, those of you who participated last year, particularly if you were in the Southwest uh, Regional Challenge, know that we do sometimes have to cancel challenges due to weather. Um, so in the event of uh, inclement weather, we will be in very close contact with all the coaches. Um, our goal would be to cancel the event uh, uh, as, as soon as we realized that, that uh, the weather was going to prevent that, but certainly uh, the, the evening before the challenge. We, we don't want people to get on the road and then we're trying to contact them and, and call them back. Um, so if we, have a, uh, if, if we have a regional challenge where at least two schools uh, and five teams are, are not registered, we will consider canceling the event. Um, but right now we're looking pretty good, so we don't really think that that's going to be an issue for us. But if that does happen, the school can choose to switch to a different regional event. Uh, we do not dictate which region you, you go to. Um, so it, it's just whichever is most convenient for you. So I, I will show you, um, this is the uh, Oxford Air Sharks, and I believe they have been participating at least three years, I think. At least three, but I, I think probably even more than that. Uh, they started off in the middle schools, um, and then they, they graduated to high school. And so last year, I think, was last year. the uh, 2019. 2019 was their first high school year. So we thought we would show you um, how they did in uh, the national competition. And this is going to go horizontal uh, in a little while, but... But don't worry, whoever was taking it readjusted their, their camera and it does go back up to vertical. And so the uh, the Oxford Air Sharks, they actually were one of the uh, 
the top champions at the national competition uh, this past year. Oh, video is oh, not screen sorry. shared. Thank okay. you, Yvonne. <laughs> All right, here, let me do it. All right, let's see if I can switch new share. All right, I don't think you missed much, so. All right, I'll go back just a little bit. You can see it's just now starting to take off. Um, so yeah, the Oxford Air Sharks, they were one of the champions at the national, comp national challenge the past two years, I believe. Um, and they've just kind of made continual progress. And one of the cool things going now from the, since we added regional challenges, we were better able to track and see how the teams had improved. And I think David has the numbers um, going from the regional challenges to the all the way to nationals? Is that I right? know, we just, uh, we didn't do, I don't think we did the, the increase from the state to the nationals. Okay, but so from regionals to the state, the uh, kids improved their energy output collectively like by over 150 yeah. percent I think so make, make great progress and that's what we want to see so if your team does make it past the uh, regional challenge they can make any adjustments they want yeah to include I mean there, there's there's no restriction on on what changes you know so if, if they if they won regionals with three blades and they want to go to six for state they, they can do that um, and, and just look at this one when it takes off right there. I mean, that is, that is just, that is a phenomenal performance. And I believe they were actually melting their generators. So they were pretty much pushing the limits of what could be done. Um, for, for some of the, the, the first timers, um, like I said, the, the, you know, these students have been doing it for, for quite a while. So, uh, they had a, a lot of um, a lot of experience to, to call on. There's a chat. Can you check? Okay. Um, so ag again, it's just like any uh, science experiment. It, it's about continual improvement. So um, just uh, just encourage your your students to to learn from it and and continue to improve. And it sounds like, so um, Yvonne, she uh, mentioned that uh, the Oxford Air Sharks, they went to an open generator then when they moved on to nationals. I think that video, I'm not sure if it was from this year or the previous year. I think year. it was the previous year. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things we would encourage, if you haven't done so already, uh, register as soon as possible. Don't worry about it. If you don't have all the information that, that we, we asked for, um, just save the confirmation email so you can go back and edit later. Um, what we want is to get a good sense for uh, how many teams we have at, at each of the challenges, um, how, you know, which regions we, we might have to, to do a little bit more targeted outreach for. Uh, you can see, uh, again, the, the table that we have. So right now, the, the Kansas City region, we only have four teams, um, two middle school and two high school. The, the most complete challenge so far is the Northeast here in Manhattan with 16 teams. Uh, the Southwest, which is in Dodge City, has 11 teams. Uh, Northwest, which is in Oakley, uh, again, pretty weak right now with, with only four. And then the Southeast, which is in Burlington, uh, has, has 12. But again, we're, we're very pleased with the fact that we have um, 47 teams registered. We're, we're pleased to see uh, a, a number of middle schools. And I'd have to compare this to last year in, in regard to the middle schools versus high school. Yeah. But, but I think we have many more middle school teams participating. So get them, yeah. get them young. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead and register. Um, if you know, we end up being full, we'll let you know that you've kind of been placed on a waiting list. And in fact, there are a few of these teams that technically are on, on our waiting list depending on um, how many more teams at those those regional events sign up. So we definitely want to work with you. We're trying to get as many schools to participate in this as possible. Yeah. And then, um, so say you were going to register for the Northeast team, and, and you can see it. I mean, in theory, it's already capped at the 16. Um, but like Ryan said, that there are a couple of teams that are on the waiting list. Um, but if you had, uh, you know, say, say you had four teams, and then, you know, you could go – if, if it were convenient for you, you could go to the Southeast and, you know, it has more openings. So, um, or if you're like, 
if a Lawrence school wanted to go, they would have an excellent, um, they could go to Kansas City, they could go to the Northeast, or they could go to the Southeast. So they have, uh, some schools might have more options than, than others. And don't blame us, we, we don't do the geography. <laughs> so, um, so, and you can go to our, our kansasenergyprogram.org to, to get more details. Um, do want you to know that uh, we have more equipment other than just wind energy. Uh, we, we teach energy education, so we have bikes that uh, students can use to, to light up light bulbs, uh, and we have, um, I try to say light bulbs and light boards at the same time. Yeah. No, I was just being efficient. Um, <laughs> so uh, we have light boards that have light bulbs in them, both incandescent and LEDs. And the students can really feel for themselves how much more power it takes for the incandescents than the LEDs. We have infrared cameras. We have uh, a solar panel that uh, feeds into a, a storage battery. And the, the uh, this is pretty cool because it's really not just a storage battery. It shows how much power is going into it. You can plug things in and it'll show you how much power is going out to each of those devices so you can use that as a real education tool. We also have um, a hand crank generator which op uh, operates similar to the bike but uh, it's, it's, easy for, it's easier for smaller children to use. Um, and if you're doing an energy fair where you can have a, you know, we've had probably 85 year olds come up. We don't want them to get on a bike, but they can do that hand crank. And uh, it shows, uh, shows the information just as well. So a lot of equipment that we have available uh, for loan. We also have uh, designed a couple of breakout rooms, uh, escape rooms, uh, exercise. These are portable kits. Uh, they start with a, a base from uh, Breakout EDU. We have uh, a number of those boxes, but we have a number of different clues, different equipment. This is our energy efficiency one, which requires the use of a light meter, an infrared camera, a watt meter, and all of that equipment is contained in the kit, and it can be set up in uh, different rooms. So. Uh, we have it set at an hour, but you can modify it to make it easier so that if you only have uh, 45 minutes, uh, you, could, you could probably modify it to, about to do 40 that. minutes, yeah. yeah. And here are the contacts. Uh, myself, Yvonne Ryan, we are available to help anybody that, that needs it. Um, we, can't, we can't provide any advice on how to design your your wind turbine because that will be giving you um, well maybe it depends on who you ask if you're asking me it's not going to give you an edge over the competition but if you were to ask Ryan or Yvonne um, that that might we can uh, as part of our services we can reach out to some of the people we know in the wind and uh, energy industry and, and maybe get some mentors for your team we'll be more than willing to, to help with that um, but general information about the, the equipment or the, the challenges will we'll be more than happy to, to help. 